Tell me, tell me what I'm getting into. Oh, welcome to Alpha Complex, <laughs> citizen. Uh, let me start by saying that this is the penultimate version of Paranoia. Paranoia was put out by the wonderful West End Games. We've already mm. reviewed several of their games. They just had the magic touch yeah. for quite a while. This game was, came out in, of course, 1984. Oh, okay. Yes. It went through several different editions. Um, when manga, um, when West End Game unfortunately went bankrupt, Mongoose acquired the, re, uh, the rights. They got together some of the original developers and they put out the 25th anniversary edition. This is the oh. 25th anniversary edition. They have since come up with a newer version uh, in 2017, I believe. They came up with a newer updated edition, uh, which changes the system around and kind of updates the setting. It's good, but I prefer this classic. This is <laughs> this is a fantastic game. This is the most fun I've ever had at the gaming table has been playing this game. Hmm. Paranoia is the anti-role-playing game. All the strategies you learned in role-playing games, teamwork, thinking ahead, you know, courage, those would all get you folded, spindle, and mutilated in this game. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the idea is that, <clears throat> briefly speaking, in the future, there was an undisclosed disaster. Hmm. And the remnants of humanity retreated to an underground city for the duration of the emergency. This city was called Alpha Complex. This city was an entirely self-contained society run by a super AI called Friend Computer. Mm. Friend Computer is benevolent. Friend Computer wants everyone to be happy. Friend Computer is unfortunately insane okay. and paranoid. And so it has created a dystopian fascist society, uh, which is something like 1984 run by the Vogons with a little bit of Monty Python thrown in. Okay. Um, it's a society divided into clearance codes. Your clearance code, which runs uh, through the spectrum from infrared to red, um, orange, yellow, green, all the way up to ultraviolet. Those are the high programmers. That's a reflection of how much the computer trusts you. It is not a reflection of how good you are at anything. So okay. it's not going up in levels. You don't get specifically any better just because you're on top of the heap. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, in the original game, um, this is you play red clearance level characters and you are troubleshooters. Your job is to hunt down trouble. Trouble in the form of mutants trouble in the form of traitors, secret societies, communists. The computer is very, very paranoid about communists. Okay. Uh, no one quite knows what a communist was or is, but they're very bad. Hmm. And so your job is to hunt them down and usually shoot them. The trick is, of course, <laughs> is that unbeknownst to your fellow players, you yourself are a commie, a mutant, or a traitor. And so you have to hide your treason from your fellows while at the same time exposing their treason so you can execute them. So the computer will think better of you. So you will go up and level and get better food and better living quarters. Hmm. It, is a, uh, it is a cramped game of paranoia and uh, double dealing and news speak and double think if you've ever read 1984. Hmm. Uh, it is a game where the players plot against each other and send secret notes to the GM. Um, it is a game that is so deadly that your character, uh, that you have six clones of your character. So if you die, you just get another clone. Hmm. Okay. Um, your character will be typically brought into a briefing and given a mission. Um, the mission probably include incorrect information. You will then be given equipment 
uh, which is faulty or irrelevant and sent in the wrong direction, where you will then try to look like you're following your mission while at the same time trying to see keep your secret societies happy and okay. possibly using your treasonous, treasonous mutant powers. <laughs> it is a blast. It is so much fun. As long as you don't think anything personally, because your best friend will backstab you in this game. They have to. That's the point. Okay. Um, so this particular version of the game is... Um, they cleaned up the rule system, and it is a lot of fun. There are they put out several sort of games, uh, several different games. This is Troubleshooter, where you play the red level characters that I was telling you about. This is Internal Security. Internal Security, you play blue level Internal Security. Internal Security of police. So basically, you're a jack booted fascist stormtrooper. Mm. <laughs> um, and then. In this game, high programmers, you play an ultra-violent high programmer. Hmm. Your job is to run Alpha Complex, and it is falling apart. Hmm. Uh, it, is, it is a very well-supported game. They have lots of different adventures. When you consider the fact that it is highly compatible with all the game material put out since 1984, it is incredibly well-supported. Wow, okay. It is a really, really fantastic game. It is a lot of fun. They do two, the rules do two fantastic things. The first is quite simply that the rules are above the clearance level of the players. The players are not allowed to know the rules. And if the players do know the rules, they should keep that knowledge to themselves. Questioning the game master is treasonous. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. The second thing they do is like many games, you, uh, you acquire brownie points. In this case, they're called perversity points. And mm -hmm. you get those for being amusing. For amusing the GM, you get a perversity point. Um, like other games, you can spend these points to make things easier for yourself or harder for someone else. Mm -hmm. The great thing that Paranoia does is that for every point you spend, you have to justify it. You can't just say, I spend the point. You have to justify the point. So, so your team leader is trying to shoot a communist traitor. You are secretly a communist and you want the traitor to get away. So the game master will say, does anybody want to spend any points? And you'll say, yes, I want to spend the point to make it more difficult for my team leader. And so you'll give the game master a point, and then you'll have to justify that. You could say, oh, his laser barrel is crooked, so he's going to miss. And your team leader doesn't want to miss, so he says, I'm going to play a perversity point to make it easier for myself. I know my laser barrel is crooked, and I have been training with it. Mm. And this goes back and forth and back and forth, and anybody at the table can spend these until the GM decides he's had enough and says no. And then you add up all these points. This makes determining the difficulty of a role an incredibly fun part of role-playing. Hmm. <laughs> because you're all sitting around the table arguing about different ways that this action could be fun or could, uh, could, could be advantageous or disadvantageous. It is an absolutely fantastic game. Okay. So, just so I'm clear, this is an RPG, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. it, it's an RPG. It's just the... It, it's just different from all the other RPGs. Uh, do you, what type of dice do you need for this? In this particular version, you need a D20. Just a D20? One D20. Just one D20? Yep, That's one all. D20, yep. Oh, okay. Yep. It just has to be the right color. Oh, okay. I mean, if you're red, you can't use a blue die. That's above your clearance level. Oh, okay. So um, you mentioned Western Games used to publish this, but then uh, the, what's the new Mongoose. One? Mongoose. And they're still publishing the new? Uh, they're publishing the new version now. This is the penultimate version. So I believe this version might technically be out of print, so it might be a little harder to find, but it shouldn't be too hard because it was being printed right up until 2016, I believe. So okay. It's not too long, not too far out of print. Okay. All right. Excellent. Wow, that, that sounds... It's fun. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. Happiness is mandatory. You will have fun. <laughs> okay. 
Well, the computer says that paranoia is fun. Buy paranoia. Other games are not fun. Other games are treasonous. <laughs> well, is there a learning curve to this game? Will new players have a hard time learning, learning this game? At, I least, think, at least with, the, with this version. Uh, I, I, think the, um, I think new players might actually have an easier time um, because old players or players who have played other role-playing games will have to unlearn what they've learned. Mm. Their strategies will not serve them well. Um, the system is really easy. The setting is uh, surprisingly deep and complex. So that may take a little uh, time to get used to, but it's up to the GM to decide how deep he wants to go into that. I play this game a lot of cons at conventions, and I have new players, and I'm able to quickly sum things up in about 10 minutes mm. and just dive right into it. Okay. Okay, let me say one last thing. <laughs> this game is great fun to read. Even if you never get a chance to play it, read it. It is hilarious. Mm. It, it is um, written uh, with a wonderful sardonic tone um, and is well worth it. Well worth reading. And well worth... I think it, it belongs in every... A gamer's library just to showcase what an RPG can do. Mm -hmm. Different ways to take it. In the same way that everybody should have a copy of Call of Cthulhu. Yeah. Everybody should have a copy of Paranoia just to see what RPGs can be beyond D&D. &D. Not that there's anything wrong with D&D. &D, okay. Yeah. Well, again, thank you for showing this. this. Um, I'm excited to play. I uh, can't wait to see. Maybe we could do a recap of that afterwards definitely i can't wait to do that all right <laughs> all right excellent um thank you very much everyone um and you have a great day